Hey guys, it's Brandon Cook here from Cook Inventions, and in this video I'm really excited to show you and do a review on this new charging boost board I got the other day. This thing is great for any project you want to make that runs off 5 volts, but requires a little extra power to avoid those pesky power failures that can sometimes happen when using 5 volt microcontrollers. Now this thing is made by Angry Helder Game Tech. I'm going to tag their page below where you can check out their website, where to buy this thing, and some of the awesome other things they make. Now what's so great about this board is it can charge any standard 3.7 volt lithium battery pack at a charge rate of either 2 or 3 amps for high speed charging and then it can boost your battery pack up to 5.2 volts with either 3 or 6 amps of power. And there's three jumpers on here which you can solder to set the power configurations for the charging as well as the output power. Now as you can imagine, this thing is great for an assortment of different projects that use high amperage, for example some of my robots. One of the biggest problems I have when making a new robot is power consumption, and Podair 2 here is no exception. This thing has four motors in it to control its wheels, two infrared sensors, two cameras, an amplified speaker on the back, and then two microprocessors. One controls the motors and sensors, and then another one is a microcomputer which boots Windows 10. And one of the biggest problems I have sometimes is when the motors are running at full speed as well as the speaker, in combination with the two cameras and sensors, you can sometimes have power failures that cause the microprocessors to spontaneously shut off. And that creates a lot of problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tr try and create a test with this new boost board to t test its true potential and see what this thing can really do. I have three of these 18650 battery packs here that are from Samsung. Each one of these provides 3.5 amps and these are high drain batteries. You always want to make sure when you're using these boost boards that you have high drain batteries, otherwise you could you risk potential of overheating your batteries. So I have three of these soldered together in parallel and this gives me a, a total of 3.7 volts at 10 and a half amps. And with this new charging board in place, I have it set to six amps output at 5.2 volts, I'm going to plug this into Podair and I'm going to run it at full speed to see what we can truly do with this thing. Alright guys, so I have Podair fully connected to the boost chip now. I have it set to 6 amps and to show that he's not running off any other battery power, I actually removed the batteries. As you can see, they're right there. I have him connected through a VPN connection right now. I typed out a script to make his motors run at full power. So as soon as I flip this switch right here, his motors are going to run at full power, which I could start right now. Motors are at full power. I'm also going to play a YouTube video for you. I'm going to set the speakers to full volume because it uses a lot of power when I'm playing the speakers. I'll play this. No power failures, as you can tell. Also going to try out the camera. Try out the camera. Let's see what we got. Yep. Camera's working. That's one of the cameras. Other camera's working right now, too. Absolutely no power failures. Alright guys, so it has officially been 40 minutes since I plugged him into the boost chip, and he's still running here with zero interruptions. I did turn off the music, but I left the motors running at full power. Left, got some food, came back, still going strong. Music. I did test the batteries, I plugged them into a multimeter, and I was getting about 3.9 volts out of them, so they're still maintaining a solid charge. I'm going to keep it plugged in and see how much longer he could last before he dies. Alright, so it has officially been one hour, and we are still going strong. Motors look like they might be slowing down a little bit, they're getting a tiny bit warm, nothing too serious though. Batteries are at 3.86 volts, so we went down by 0.04 to test the uh, music again. Music is still working and still connected with no power failures. Alright, so it has officially been an hour and 20 minutes 
and I just measured the batteries at 3.82 volts, which means we dropped again by 0.04 volts, same as last time, dropping at a pretty steady rate. And we're still connected here. Still no issues playing music. We're gonna try it again at an hour and 40. All right, it has been an hour and 40 minutes, and just as I suspected, I measured the batteries at 3.78 volts. They dropped again by 0.04, pretty impressive. This thing is not getting even remotely warm, which is really impressive as well. And uh, as you can see, we are still fully connected. And let me play the music. And we're still going strong. I'll check back in at two hours. All right, guys, we are at the two hour mark and this little guy has ran a marathon by now. I just measured the batteries at 3.7 volts. So we did go down 0.08 from last time, which means we're starting to have more of a steady decline on the battery's voltage. However, we still are connected. We could uh, test it out right now, and uh, we're still looking good there. Let's see how much further we can go. A little over two hours and 20 minutes in, and I gotta say I'm very impressed. I did not think these three batteries were gonna get me this far. I just measured them at 3.62 volts, and we are still connected. We'll test it right now. Very impressive. However, I think I'm going to stop it now. I'm very satisfied with the results. I don't want to let the batteries get much lower than 3.6 volts. And I'm going to charge it up and see how long it takes to charge. Alright guys, so the batteries are fully charged now. I was just doing a little experiment here to see if I could use external LEDs to determine the battery's charge status. Because for my project, I'm not going to be using the onboard LEDs. And as you can see, I got that working. As for the charger, I set it to 3 amps, and it took just over 2 hours to fully charge this 10.5 amp battery pack. That's pretty impressive. Overall, I would definitely give this charging boost board a 10 out of 10 review, and I would definitely buy this again. It's very useful for an assortment of different projects. 6 amps is by far one of the most powerful boost chips I've seen on the market, and that's going to supply more than enough power than you're going to need for most 5 volt projects. And as you can tell from our test results, it's very efficient. Most of the other boost chips I've seen on the market won't be able to power this robot at full power, and they do also get relatively hot, telling me that they're inefficient and wasting some of their power on heat. Once again, this charge and boost board was made by Angry Helder Game Tech. I'm going to tag below where you can get one. Definitely check out their page. And my name is Brandon Cook with Cook Inventions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.